Artist of the Month, or AOTM as it is known by my Patreons. This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and welcome to bending the tip of your airbrush needle. Again. Once a month, except for the last month, I choose an artist of my Patreons in the Discord who is going to be the Artist of the Month. This is split up into two categories, either the intermediate or the beginners, and this month I decided to invite a guest onto the channel, Matt Models Customs. Welcome to the channel, my dude. We are going to look through some of these pieces. Sounds good. Let's do it. I think we should start out with the beginner. Yeah, so when I'm, when I'm judging 3D prints, the first thing I look for is the cleanup. Um, because you, it's like it's like a garage kit. You can't fix a ugly garage kit with good paint and uh, vice versa. You can't make a good garage kit look good with bad paint. So first thing I look for is, can you tell that it's 3D printed? So from there, then after that, I judge, I judge the paint after that. So yeah, but there's yeah. obviously some um, artifacts and layer lines that could have been cleaned up a little bit on this. Guy. Yeah, the pr maybe the too much suction on the print or something that's causing the layers to shift yeah. each time. Yeah, this looks really sharp. I think, um... Bit of a failure on the arm there, but it's, you know... But I think when people enter contests who haven't entered before, I think they, they don't know where they fit a lot of times. You know, they don't know... Sometimes they're really good and they don't know they're good, or vice versa, they're not very good and they think they're really good. <laughs> so, this looks really sharp. Um, I'm digging this, yeah. I think so too. I like the little scuffs on the boots and stuff. It's really good for a beginner. That's actually, I think that a stuff can move himself up next month into the intermediate for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's 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 above beginner for sure. Uh, it's a, I think it's a toss up between Grogu and uh, Mandalorian. I really, I think Grogu looks great too. There's some really nice subtle uh, shading going on, like you mentioned earlier in the ears. If, if I would give any advice to the person that did this one, I would say, I don't know if it's the environment, but there's a lot of dust that I'm seeing in the paint itself. So I'm not sure whether it's the environment, oh, yeah. right? Or maybe it's like between layers. Maybe it's it's windy. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're painted in the garden. <laughs> I don't know. It just needed more cleanup, I think. I, I, I think Mandalorian, man, because I think it's just a, a tougher paint job. It's more detailed. And um, print-wise, it's a, it's a really clean print. He's got that one little layer separation, but... And so the winner of the beginner for Artist of the Month this month is Asaf Katan. Well done, my dude. You actually did a really, really great job. And in my opinion, I think you should totally move into the intermediate category because you definitely have what it takes to paint at a higher level. This is impressive, man. The chrome, chrome I, I, I avoid chrome as as much as possible. <laughs> when someone tells me they want something chromed, I'm like, I'm like, you need to get spray chromed if you want it to be durable. I wonder if this is Molotov chrome as well. But yeah, because it does, it takes ages to draw. And then how durable is it after it cures? Not that, it's not, it's durable enough, but you're not gonna, you shouldn't play soccer with it. <laughs> probably, that's probably good advice, yeah. This looks, that's impressive, man. That looks good. I'm not seeing any, um, the print looks good. Yeah, they put little speckles like a galaxy on the, on the base here. Can you see that? Yeah, it's got a little star, starry thing going on in the base. Yeah. The clean print, I'm not seeing any, and Chrome would show any print artifact in a second. Now, I'm not sure if that's a seam in the middle of the, se of the, of the surfboard, if that was printed in two pieces and seamed that's together. Good. That's the only thing I'm seeing as far as, like, prep work goes. But other than that, it's, it's super clean. That's a, that's a nice piece. That is a good piece. Well, so he's got something going on in his chest. Not, well, I'm just seeing one shade of green. I'm not seeing any... There isn't any real highlight. I feel like they could definitely have more contrast. Yeah, I feel like he's got the mid-tones down, but there's no shadows or highlights. Maybe some blue or even purple in those shadows. Now there I'm seeing a little... Just a tiny bit of shading in the chest, but overall it's pretty flat. A little bit more contrast. A little bit more contrast would push this piece a lot further. The mouth is actually really good. I mean, the, the teeth are a little little white, but I think the gums are looking pretty good. The tongue looks pretty good. Even the lips have some nice shading to them. That's a, that's a detailed piece. So that's, um, so my guess is it probably hand painted most of that, um, just by looking at the lines and stuff. That to me is a, an all airbrush kind of job. Um, if you don't have an airbrush, obviously you have to hand paint. 
but um, that's that's hard to do by hand just because it's it's got to be super clean. Uh, and the skin tones need a little work, obviously. He's a little he's a little pale. The base is looking good. They're kind of like the the Spider Man logo is looking good. Nice fade job on the blue. Try to hang. so he hand I don't hand paint eyes. I use decals to begin with, and then I paint over them because I suck at painting eyes. <laughs> so they're placed right. Yeah, 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 where they're placed is, and that's difficult to do in its own right. This is a beginner. Is like... His portrait could do with a little bit of work, but it, this is this is not beginner anymore. No, this is mm. definitely intermediate at least. His lining could be a little bit better, for example, here. Yeah, so he's probably about 14 inches tall all together from the base, the top of his head. So you kind of have to also, when you're judging something, we're zooming in here on the screen. But in person, you wouldn't get that close to it. So you kind of have to, everything has a viewing distance. So the bigger the piece is, the further back you would stand at, you know, in person and look at it. So that's kind of how when I'm when I'm painting, I look at things, okay, well, what would I, how would I view this? You know, I get my, my optical optivizers on whatever and paint, but then I look at it and I judge it from where I would view it in real life. So when you zoom in and you're being super, super hyper, hyper critical, sometimes you, you see things you normally wouldn't see in person, but Agreed. Looking at this overall, it looks overall. really good. Overall looks really good, I think. There's a nice yeah, yeah. amount of shadow, a nice amount of highlight, good separation on the elements on the suit, for example. Yeah, Deadpool looks great, man. It's a toss-up between Deadpool and Silver Surfer for me. Deadpool, just bat dad, needs to be moved over into the intermediate series because he is good enough to be painting there. However, between these two, if I'm gonna pick one, I'm gonna choose Deadpool because I think it's a freaking fantastic piece. Overall, aesthetically, it just looks pleasing to me. So that is it for the beginner series. We're now gonna move over onto the intermediate series. And again, because I missed two months, we've got two months worth of this. There weren't as many entries. However, everybody gets a chance to uh, share their work. These people have chosen to be in the intermediate series because they believe that their work is of a certain level. This looks this looks great, man. This is... Yeah. <laughs> Let's zoom in a bit, yeah, and have a look. But I think composition with the colors and everything, they all belong in this environment. They look like they're in this environment. Some she's added. I don't know if it's a she or a bit. They have added some foliage <laughs> to the base. So and that that I think that's a good touch to me. I mean, maybe not so much in like larger scale statue. You wouldn't really do that kind of thing. But on on this kind of stuff, especially in a hobby adding this stuff looks really good yeah i mean if i'm being i, I, I never i don't paint dinosaurs <laughs> it looks really good i think if i had like one kind of critique and this is just from viewing other people who've painted dinosaurs and seeing their work the only critique i really have on this and this looking at it pulled back a little bit and i could be completely wrong on this but like the underside of the t-rex might be a slightly different shade but I think this looks fantastic. This looks it is cool. I like the blood on the little raptor's hands. And obviously because yeah, they've been right. fighting him and stuff. So it's really cool. And this is a bust from uh, Wolf Tavern miniature. So this will be a miniature bust. I think, so I, I'm not a mini painter. I've, I've, I've judged minis and I've looked at them. So my, my initial thought is that this is like a good starting point. And from here, this person would build up more highlights and more shadows because again it looks a little overall flat to me and yeah. typically the smaller you paint the more contrast you want you paint a lot of minis brent so you know yes. the smaller it is you want to really um, exaggerate the details and the high and the and the contrast because you your eyes physically piece. can't focus that close so you have to kind of fake the eye with how you paint but you can you can use those techniques though to help even in large scale things if you wanted to push a little bit of emphasis say for example on a bag that a character was holding you could use that forced um contrast to help push out certain pieces i do i do that also and i tend to do that really with um if they're wearing like fabrics or clothing i yeah. tend to really kind of if there's like a lot of really cool texture sculpted in i really try to bring that out and just make it pop I feel like like this is a good starting point, like midway through the painting process, and it just needs to punch it up a little bit more. So quarter scale, this is gonna be pretty big. This is probably 16 inches tall, 17 inches yeah. tall, would be my guess, somewhere in there. 
Yeah, those, uh, so if you go back up to that, um, the corrugated pipe, those are a bitch to clean up. You can see in there, that's probably where his supports were. If it's in a spot where you can't see it, I usually don't worry about it. But if I can see that, then I go in and I'll clean up every single one of those little grooves. And it's, it's, it's super tedious, but especially if you're going to do like a chrome finish or if you do any, if you know you're going to do dry brushing later, yeah, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. Oh my god, if you dry brush that. When I'm, you know, when I'm, when I'm setting up my parts to print, I'm trying to always put my supports in areas where I don't care if I don't see it, where if I don't get the cleanup, you know, 100%. This looks really good overall. I, I mean... I'm, yeah, I'm actually really, I'm really impressed. In this situation, if you saw this in a shop, it was in a, um, a cabinet or something, they had their shop lights on, as this is like that. This is how it would look, bro. Yeah. My, my only real crit is that maybe if since he's stomping on skulls and mud, maybe dirty up the feet a little bit. Agreed. You should literally throw mud at it as well as on the skulls themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because he's he's really clean overall. This was his first entry into the... Into now he's with the big boy, so now he's got he's to gotta take it. <laughs> yeah. I always find these kind of ones a little bit awkward because how do you display them as well? Like, it does, do you display it coming forward? Do you display it going to the side? Like, I think that also makes it a problem when you paint this too because, especially with minis, you pick a display side and you paint that side to be the side that you view, right? Are those, uh, is that, are those print artifacts or is that part of the sculpt? So, this could be pushed. I think confidence levels with this is probably a thing pushing that contrast a little bit more, being conscious that you can do that, you know? Overall, I think it's a cool piece though. It's sculpt is a beautiful sculpt. Well, I think it's his photo. So if you look at how he photographed it, there's one light. And I know a lot of people don't have photographs, like photo setups. And that's that's an art in, its, in itself as photographing pieces. Cause I think yeah, what's happening in his light is yeah. washing, is washing yeah. everything out. Cause it's only, you're seeing, there's one shadow behind him. And I think if it was lit differently, we would see a lot more detail in the skin because I can kind of see it. So what's there is just the, the lighting on the photo just washes everything out, unfortunately. But I can we can see it. Like, and the, the leather looks really good. The, the metal on the metal uh, shoulder plate looks fantastic. Even the little dragon logo, he's got some varying tonal values in there. Um, this looks really sharp, man. This looks really good. I think if it was lit different, his skin would look 100% better. But I think it's like, man, that little uh, that little gnome thing on his leg that looks great. Yeah. So and, and if you his beard his beard that was obviously dry brush and it's all one tone. So a real quick easy way to fix that if you want to, because I dry brush skin every once in a while too, but I don't leave it. No, you airbrush back. Yeah, and then I'll then I'll, then I'll do a wash on top of it just to kind of tie it all together because the dry brushing is very stark on skin. Yeah, so you get the you get the you get the advantage of seeing the pores and everything because that's what he's trying to bring out in the, in the skull. But then you then you push it back a little bit so it looks like it's under the skin. Otherwise, it looks really stark. But again, I think if we saw this in a different light, it would be a lot different too. And I agree with you. This light is killing all of this detail. So another thing that really helps, especially when you have a character like this with a lot of clothing and different layers. So if you're looking at this photo and you're looking at this like leather shoulder strap and it comes up across this like fur, go between, go where that leather is and add a shadow. Put in, just take a darker tone of whatever this fur is and airbrush a, yeah, right there. Airbrush a shadow in there or something. Oil, I use oils a lot for that. Oils are fantastic because you can put them on and blend them out super, super easily. I mean, oils, I love oils. If you never work oils, Give them a shot. They're like, awesome. <laughs> I don't hate the tattoo, right? But I feel like someone who can paint like this can take that tattoo further. You know? Like yeah. So I've never, paint, I've never painted tattoos on a figure. So to me, that looks like it's more like a decal than a tattoo. Like it looks like it should have maybe a slight misting of the skin tone on top of it to kind of soften it. And even maybe a little bit of a, a, a lawn, like a dark bluish kind of lawn. You know, just to kind of make it look like it was lined a little bit or something. But also, it might be the way that he's trying to make this come across. He might make it, want to make it look like they're just airbrushed on and not tattooed on, perhaps. But I'm looking at this detail in here, and I'm saying this guy has put in 
some tarm on this 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 coat there a little bit maybe ribbon very small yeah yeah that's, that that looked very nice on someone's shelf for sure yeah so I, i'm not sure how much of that is his paint and how much of that is post-processing the photo and then he really warmed it up when he processed the photos yeah i see what you're saying oh these soles look really cool yeah i like the details are there but i think if he would have painted it more like his photos that he did with that really warm tone because that would really give it that kind of that give it that sense of you know 80s horror nightmare on elm street look to me and again unfortunately he's suffering from just a really stark one on either an on camera flash or i mean yeah i I, agree. I totally agree as far as with the 3d print going i think here you can clearly see it could have been cleaned up a little bit better overall it's pretty good though, but looking at the support marks on the back is you look at look at the hat nice hat got some got some nice tones going in there yeah i like the rim is like a little bit worn out on the rim edge this is a tough one, man, because we got some really nice work. I, unfortunately, I think I really like Kratos a lot. The photos are terrible, unfortunately. So it's really, I, I'm pretty sure what I want to see is there. This guy's, this guy's got his photos on lock. This is photographed really, really well. Mm -hmm. And that's helping him a lot. So it shows off all your work. If you photograph stuff, if you can photograph it correctly, it'll show your work off. And that's, that's a whole nother kind of thing to learn is how to photograph your pieces so my my gut instincts for me is between this and jurassic park i'm actually talking between uh kratos jurassic park and the uh the bust i kind of i kind of lean towards jurassic because it tells a story i agree it tells a whole story i mean so does the other one but the jurassic one just gives it so much there is so much more in the story you can tell the whole story by looking at it and the more you look at it the more story comes out so that makes the winner of the artist of the month for the intermediate category in december valentine my dude you did a freaking amazing job this is such a great piece and uh continue to make cool pieces like this I mean, this guy's got quite nice little hobby set up i like his paint right this is really cool actually Look at the boat going down the water. Yeah, you get all Pennywise. I'm oh assuming God, this is supposed to be Pennywise because the balloons are. The like the 90. This is. He says it's it. 1990. I mean, it's freakishly scary. <laughs> I would not want that on my shelf looking at me at night. <laughs> yeah, it is terrifying. I like this texture in the base. This looks very rendered. Looks great. And, um. Yeah, her clothes look great. Black, black is actually a really hard color, especially if you have several tones of black. Yeah. It's like white. There isn't just one white. There, it's infinite tones of white, and same with black. Yeah, I mean, even the stripe on the dress here that's come out, he's used just the edge to edge highlight yeah. the dress. So that's like, that's like really clever. I think to me, that's very clever thinking. Also, look at the difference. The shoes are polished. Yeah, they look like leather. They and they've got a they've got a gloss on them as well as the bag. Certain parts are glossy, but her dress and the rest of her clothes and everything is not. I feel like his portrait could do with a little bit of work, but... It needs a little more... Now we got some pot marks, unfortunately, but from the supports. But I think, yeah, it needs a little more detail in it because it looks kind of very monotone right now. I like it. I, I, would, I would love to print and paint one of those myself. That's beautiful. This yeah, is this, a is a, this is a custom piece. Yeah. I own I own this kit. <laughs> okay, so let's let's have a look through the picture. The only thing we can judge on this is the paint because this kit is by a company in China called Ownage, and they produce the best kits around in the figure world. It's like when I when I get an Ownage kit, I know like if if there's any prep work, it's like super super minimal. It's like almost zero usually. So we just have to judge the paint because there's no prep work on these things. I think yeah. on this one, if you look now, if you look at his back there, see how it's separating a little bit from the belt. So that's because of all the weight leaning forward and the magnet's not strong enough. So in my kit, what I did is I actually put another pin. I put a large pin, a three eighths inch pin, in the back there, so it doesn't get that gap. But uh, overall, the paint looks good. Um, the skin tones on his arms, I'm not a fan of. They look a little yellow. The portrait looks great, and the base overall looks really good. I think the weathering's there. Um, I'm not sure what again. Depends on which comic you. Some guys paint these things green, and I don't think the color really matters. But the paints there, good weathering, got some like oil effects, and um, I kind of I lean towards Pennywise really to be honest. That's that's my opinion. 
It looks exactly like it came from the '90s. It. I mean, it looks great. I'm, choo I'm choosing. I'm choosing Pennywise. Cool. I think I'll agree with you on that one. The artist of the month for January is going to be Will with it. And between me and Matt, we've decided that you did a great job on this piece and you should carry on painting like this. Don't forget everybody, you cannot enter if you won any of the previous months. You have to cool down period for one month and uh, paint some awesome stuff. All right, well I want to thank Brent for having me on and uh, helping him uh, critique other people's work uh, this month. It's better than people critiquing my work. Uh, but yeah, this is Matt from Matt's Models Customs. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's Matt's Models Customs. Pretty simple. Um, you can check out. I've got, if you're into larger scale stuff, kits and stuff like that, I have full work in progress videos of that. And then also check me out on Facebook. Same page. Our same name, Matt's Models Customs, where I post regularly and have live broadcasts and stuff on stuff I'm working. So uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. So it's at this time that I would like to say a super special thank you to the patrons for supporting me over on Patreon. It's because of your help that I'm able to use these lights to blind my eyeballs, as well as I'm able to show off your guys' work to the rest of the world. And by the rest of the world, what I mean is the small amount of people who tend to watch these videos. Now, of course, if you want those small amount of people to become more amount of people, then you need to click the like button, leave some words in the little square box, and after you've done that, share the video with your gram. Thank you everybody for watching the video. Hopefully you found some inspiration in this video. Please go follow Matt, check out his work. It's incredible stuff. And uh, if you didn't like anything you saw in the video, then the best thing I can say to you is just f off. Now I'm gonna go do nothing for another two months before I do another Artist of the Month. Sorry about that, bros.